Grace and peace in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. And welcome to worship with Morrisville Presbyterian Church. Welcome to those of you that worship with us often. Welcome to those of you that have not worshipped with us in a while. Welcome to those of you that are worshipping for the first time with us today. It is a joy to be able to worship with all of you. Today we finish our sermon series on the resurrected Christ. For the past couple of weeks we have borne witness to the ways that God has shown up in new and unexpected ways. We saw how Jesus showed up to the disciples in the upper room, saying, Peace be with you in a time of fear. We saw when Jesus appeared to Mary Magdalene by the tomb, calling her by name. We saw Jesus appear on the road to the, with the disciples on the road to Emmaus, opening their minds and hearts to the good news of God and the world. And we saw last week how God calls people like Ananias and Saul to live in a world filled with God's love instead of division. And so today we continue that journey and see where God is showing up in new and unexpected ways, where the risen Christ is calling us next. Let us worship God together. If you have your home worship bulletin, we invite you to join us in our call to worship. They thought the story was finished. They thought the hope had ended. But the story has just begun. The hope is newly born. They thought the tomb was sealed. They brought items to anoint him. But the tomb is empty and he is not there. For Jesus is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the gospel of the resurrected Christ. Let us worship God together. My friends, the proof of God's amazing love is this. While we were sinners, 
Christ died for us. And because we have faith in him, we can approach the throne of grace with confidence. So let us join our voices together in our prayer of confession as it's found in your home worship bulletin. Let us pray. Like the disciples who came to your tomb as the first day of the week was dawning and found the tomb empty, we have such good news to tell. For you, Lord, have cast off your grave clothes and shattered the powers of sin and death. But we have heard this news before. How often have we let your words fall silent? How often have we returned to daily routines as if Easter changes nothing? How often have our actions belied the power of the resurrection to transform our world? Risen Lord, forgive us for our half-hearted witness. Free us from the bindings of fear or indifference, disappointment or disenchantment. Fill us with the light of resurrection and send us into the world to proclaim in word and deed that we have seen the Lord. People of God, do not dwell on your wounds any longer. For Christ has risen to heal you. Christ has risen to forgive you. Christ has risen to change us all and to bind us together as the people of God. And so whether it is from our homes or from street corners or from our hearts, let us proclaim with joy the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Alleluia and amen. Hey everybody, it's Pastor Alex here, and I am at our prayer wall. I am really excited by all the colors that I see behind me and the prayers that people have attached to our prayer wall, and I need some help from my young friends. So I've brought some ribbon and a marker, and I'm gonna write my prayer. And while I'm writing my prayer, I want, I need some help from you. Maybe you can close your eyes and maybe hold your hands and think of a prayer that you would like to ask God. A prayer for maybe your siblings or your family members while well, I'm writing my prayer. And that way you can add your prayer up here when your parents are ready and you can attach it to a ribbon. So that way we can show the congregation how we're connected even during a difficult time. So I'm going to write my prayer and you all think of yours, okay? All right. Thanks everybody. And now let's pray together. Please repeat after me. God, we pray that you hear our prayers and help us to feel connected to you and to one another. We pray, amen. As we prepare our hearts to hear God's word, let us pray. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us and use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Amen. Friends, our gospel reading this morning comes from the gospel according to Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. Listen now for the word of God. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices 
so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled back. And as they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him, but go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. This is the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Did you know that there are multiple endings in the gospel of Mark? It's true. Mark chapter 16 essentially has three different sections that has three different endings. And our text for this morning, Mark chapter 16 verses 1 through 8, are, is believed to be the original ending to Mark's gospel. In other words, it is the oldest written account of Jesus' resurrection that we have. And that is one of the reasons why I love this text. And the other reason why I love this text is because it ends on a cliffhanger. The scene begins with Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome approaching the tomb, going to anoint Jesus' body. And these women have often been overlooked in Christian history, but they are pivotal to Mark's gospel because they are the only people who were present at Jesus' death, his burial, and his resurrection. And as they are approaching Jesus' tomb to anoint Jesus' body, they realize that Jesus is not there, but instead a messenger is there in blinding white clothing, telling them that Jesus is not dead, but is instead alive, and that he is in Galilee, and that these women have to go tell the other disciples to go on ahead to Galilee so that they can meet Jesus and continue God's kingdom work. But they don't do it. The scene ends with them being frozen in fear and not saying anyone, anything to anyone. The text ends just like that. And so too does the ending of Mark's original gospel. They said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. As we hear about these followers of Christ, seized by fear on Easter morning, we can empathize. We too live in this time of flux where fear is overwhelmingly powerful. Some of us are afraid to go outside. We worry about the economy, the sources of our life. We worry that the world has been upended. Fear takes hold. We don't know what the future will hold. And yet now we stand on the edge of a new season, unsure what will take place. Fear still haunting us and holding fast to our hearts as we glimpse the beginnings of a country starting to reopen. We started this crisis by retreating to our homes, by thinking that when it was over, we would be able to go gloriously outside, hug our friends and family, life would return to normal, we would return to a sanctuary full of singing and praise. And instead, our next steps feel a lot more complicated. They seem more uncertain and more filled with fear than we originally imagined. Questions about government leadership on both sides of the aisle render us unsure what to listen to or who to listen to, let alone how to plan. And instead, we're left wondering, is this the moment when we're finally able 
to go back? To our jobs, our sanctuary, our normal lives, where the world, will the world be right back to normal? Will it be weeks? Will it be months in a time like this? We're so unsure what to do next. As we look to our scripture passage for guidance on what to do next, we find an unexpected answer. And that shouldn't be too surprising since all throughout this journey with the resurrected Christ, we have seen how God shows up in mysterious and unexpected ways. There is a lot of debate about Mark's gospel and especially his ending and his original ending that is our scripture passage for this morning. But one of the arguments that I find most compelling about our passage, the one that I think speaks to us in our moment, the one that is able to guide us in a time where we're not sure what to do next, is that Mark originally ends his gospel narrative with this cliffhanger, with the disciples unable to speak about God's good news of Jesus' resurrection in the world because he wants you to jump in and do it yourself. Think about it. Jesus in the Gospels has been a conduit for God's love that breaks into the world that desperately needs it. He has tended to the sick. He has been compassionate to those who are on the outskirts of society. He has started a movement that is inf infectious in its love. And all the while, the people that are close to him, his disciples, have learned and have been given the tools to be able to do Jesus and God's mission themselves. They have sat with people in their pain. They have shared words of hope when people desperately needed it. They have started and continued the movement that is infectious through acts of love and kindness. And what better way to end this story of God and God's people doing God's will in the world than with a cliffhanger that brings you into the story too? Our passage for this morning is like a relay race of discipleship. We have watched the disciples run their leg of the race. In verse 8 in our passage today, this cliffhanger serves as the divine hand that passes the baton from the disciples to us. As the scene ends, we are pulled into the story. Will you go to Galilee? Will you continue the race? Will you spread the word of God's love in this world through word and deed? My friends, we need people today who are willing to go to Galilee, who are willing to take the baton from the disciples and respond in faith. Or more accurately, we need people who are willing to keep doing it. And that might mean that we are not able to be together for a while. And that is okay. That is okay because even though our church building is closed, the church, my friends, the church, is so very open. We have witnessed the church be open every single day that we have been apart. We have seen the church stay open through your phone calls, your birthday cards, your parade celebrations for one another, the way you have stayed connected in a time of isolation. We have seen the church stay open through your incessant prayers for folks' recovery for your, in your comfort of those who are grieving in your work in healthcare services or in the way that you have supported those who are working on behalf of so many right now. We have seen the church stay open through your support of Ivan's Outreach Center, through the Food Center and the Morrisville School District and countless others. Your unwavering dedication to our community has kept our church so open. We have seen the church stay open through the ways you have faithfully filled and lived each day. Facing your fears, 
focusing on the safety of the community, forgiving yourself and others during a really difficult time. Every time, every time we have done one of these acts that comes from the center of a burning heart, we bear witness, my friends, to the resurrected Christ in our midst, calling us to be his disciples in the world. Even though our building is closed, the church, my friends, is very much open. We are facing a time of uncertainty as our country argues over how to reopen. And there will be more times in the future where we will be unsure about the road ahead. But it is in these times that we trust in the divine hand of God that has been guiding our actions all along. So let us take up the baton from the disciples and go ahead to Galilee. Let us rise to the challenge of our time and keep doing these actions of love and continue to do God's mission in the world that we have been doing these past couple of months. Let us continue to keep the church open even though the building has been closed. Let us spread God's word of love in this world through word and deed. Let it be so. Amen. Trusting in the power and presence of the risen Christ and hearing his call to discipleship in a world that needs it, let us join in the words spoken by Christians for thousands of years and affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed as it is printed in your home worship bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In this Easter season, we are reminded just how Jesus shows up to us in new and unexpected ways. So let us keep our hearts open to see how God will show up in a time of prayer. I invite you to join us in our home worship bulletin in the section called A Pause for Prayer. We invite you to take out a piece of paper and pen or turn to the people with you and join in answering a couple of these questions that we have before you. The questions are as followed. What has been your biggest struggle this week? How have you seen the church be open these past few months? How do you believe God is calling you to pick up the baton of discipleship in this chapter? We're going to encourage you to pause the video and have some conversation or write how you respond to these questions. And when you are ready, you can turn the video back on and come to a collective moment of prayer. Let us pray. My friends, some of the content of our prayer today has been adapted from the Reverend Nadia Boltz Weber. Let us turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Holy God, in these days that seem long and in these weeks that seem even longer, we come to you wondering when this season will end. We come to you with our frustration and our grief and our longing for normalcy and good news, and we often feel as if we're coming up empty. We hear the hope of reopening, but know we'll be waiting a while longer. We glimpse the promise of normalcy on the horizon, and we know that even when we reach that horizon, it won't feel like it once did. 
on this weekend when we're supposed to be worshiping together in our sanctuary and gathering in groups for picnics and parades to honor those who have given of themselves so selflessly for our country. Instead, we find ourselves in the same places we've been for weeks, with a grief that persists, a longing that feels overwhelming, and a loneliness that clings to our bones. We are not sure when we can worship together again. And so for now, for now, when a song fills our hearts, and our hips sway to a familiar rhythm and our voices take flight. May it be counted as praise. When our eyes brighten in a smile behind our mask as we thank the cashier, may it be counted as passing the peace. When we snap at our spouse or our friend or our child, may the I'm sorry that follows be counted as confession. May the hug or the embrace or the grace we receive in return be counted as the warmth of your forgiveness. Oh God, when we read the news, when our heart tightens in our chest or when the tears come and our shoulders shake and our breathing falters, may it be counted as prayer. When we water our plants and wash our dishes and pour water for ourselves or for a family member, may it be counted as remembering our baptism. When we sit at the same table in our apartment or our home and eat one more homemade meal or one more microwave dinner slowly, joyfully, with nothing else demanding our time or attention, may it be counted as communion. When our kids are screaming and it's raining outside again and the deadline is looming and our sanity is holding on by a thread and there seems to be no rest for the weary, May our tears or deep breaths in the corner of our homes be counted as lament. And when we sit in our homes this week, alone or in the company of those who you have entrusted to our care, may we know a greater home in worshiping you. Merciful God, receive these prayers and every prayer that lingers in our hearts. May we be a people who live in faith and cling to the hope of the one who came to comfort us in times of trial. Sustain us in seasons of longing and breathe a peace upon us that passes all understanding. And now hear us as we join the voice of the one who came to save us all praying as he taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, in a time of uncertainty, let us look for the resurrected Christ in our midst. Let us trust in the divine hand of God that has guided us in our actions that have kept the church open even though the building has been closed. Let us take the baton from the disciples and continue to do the work of God's love in this world through word and deed. And as you go, my friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you, be with those you love, and be with those you are called to love this day and forevermore. 
and together we say, Amen. Uh...